Let's do this. All right, looks like we are ready to roll. First things first, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out to do this with us. Uh, I, I can only imagine how busy you are right now. Um, so I understand that this was probably no easy feat to get on FaceTime with us. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. Um, so obviously, you know, you've been on the job heading up the state's response to COVID-19 unemployment for a little less than a week. If you don't mind just talking about some of the recent changes that have gone into place since you've been there, um, including them waiving that biweekly check-in requirement. Right. Uh, uh, nice to speak with you, Sasha. So you're correct. I've been on, uh, the governor asked me to uh, uh, spend some time. I currently run the, I'm the secretary of the Dep Florida Department of Management Services. Uh, Governor DeSantis asked me to step into a role here at the Department of Economic Opportunity on Thursday. Uh, I've been here four and a half days so far. Uh, our mission is very, very distinct it is, and very laser focused. It's getting Floridians paid as quickly as we can. We're Our, our strategy to do that is fourfold. It is to, number one, uh, to communicate honestly and be very transparent with where we stand. Number two, uh, we are challenging the status quo. Uh, we are asking every question that we can. Uh, we're trying to get everybody to think differently about how we can operate. Uh, following line with that, we are challenging all of the regulatory uh, issues that we have. Governor DeSantis on Thursday afternoon at a recommendation of our group uh, waived the recertification requirement that a claimant might have for every two weeks. Uh, in addition, Governor DeSantis spoke with uh, Department of Labor Secretary Scalia yesterday uh, and has uh, paved the way for us to reduce uh, friction and bureaucracy so that we can get these payments out to Floridians faster. And then fourth, which is a very big hurdle, is we have technology that is very challenged. Uh, I liken the technology to a 10-year-old car that was built to drive 40 miles an hour and we're asking it to do sequential Daytona 500s at 180 miles an hour with no pit stops and with 25 passengers. So we've had to make a series of significant technology upgrades. We're, we're trying to do those to minimally inconvenience Floridians, uh, but it's a very big hurdle and we're, uh, we're trying to do it as quickly as we can. Now, a topic that has come up over the last couple of weeks is retroactivity for benefits from people who have had issues applying online because of technical glitches they want to see some of them want to see their benefits start from the day that they tried to apply is that something that is being discussed right now and if so how soon could we see that implemented yeah so not only is it being discussed it's in the, pro uh, the process of being implemented. We, uh, but we, one of the things we want to make sure of is that we allow Floridians to maximize the benefit between the state benefit and the federal benefit. So picking the date for Floridians is really important, and we want to be very thoughtful and very deliberate when we provide that guidance to Floridians about that date so we can maximize both the state benefit and the federal benefit for eligible Floridians. Now, when we look at the recent numbers that were sent out by the DEO today, um, it showed of those unique applications, only 6.2% have been paid out. That's yes. a relatively low number. Um, talk a little bit about that stat and what you all are doing to make sure that these payments are processed quicker for people who were able to submit their application. Right, so um, a couple things. So the, the process in which the federal government and the state traditionally have required us to, to take steps is it requires a lot of third-party verification and even on a good day so uh, in december of 2019 a claim would probably take about two weeks to process now that we've had hundreds of thousands of claims the backlog from uh, uh, the various data sources that we get verifications from are being bombarded not only by florida but by 49 other states so that's why the, uh, the regulatory and, and cutting the red tape that is that Governor DeSantis has been working so hard at and so effective at is going to help us to speed up that payment approval process. And by cutting the red tape, are you just referring to the previous requirements that have been waived 
or are you referring to other uh, requirements that will be waived in the future? So, so the, the, the red tape and the, the legal hindrances that are within the state, the governor has immediately taken action to uh, get rid of those. We are in constant dialogue with the federal government and the U.S. Department of Labor to get them to be more flexible with us so that we can issue those payments to Floridians faster. So here, here's a question. Um, I've talked to people who have applied online and they submitted a paper application. I realize that that probably creates a little bit of a headache on your end because you have duplicates. Um, has that slowed down the process any and how is that being handled? So um, so yes, when uh, several weeks ago before I got involved, there were a number of technology uh, impediments. And so the governor and the Department of Economic Opportunity made paper applications available to the public. Of course, you know, it's 2020, paper is not ideal, uh, but it, paper is available. So one of the things that we have done, sorry, the phone was ringing. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things that we've done is we've mobilized 2,000 state employees. So as those paper applications do arrive, here in Tallahassee, we have 2,000 state employees that are mobilized to process those applications every day. These are employees that work at the Department of Transportation, the Department of Management Services, the Department of Education, people that are committed to spend a portion of their day to help Floridians in need. Would we prefer that everybody do the electronic application? Yes, but we realize not everybody's got paper, uh, not doesn't have computers, and so the paper applications are still accepted. We do realize that there are probably people that applied in the first system, our replacement system, and mailed applications. So there's probably some duplicates and triplicates. Once those are all in, we can do a deduplication process and ensure that we have one application per eligible uh, applicant. Here in South Florida, there are a lot of gig workers and contractors and, and people who are independent who would like to receive their federal benefits. At this point, uh, what process can they go through in order to receive those benefits um, and what steps should they be taking? Yep. Uh, and I, I'm, I, I, I get the question. And by the way, I'm a, I'm a South Floridian. This is my first government experience. So I, I want to do everything we can to help those people in South Florida as quickly as possible. There is a federal program. We are in the process of standing up the application process online and we'll have additional guidance on how those gig workers and independent contractors make those applications over the next uh, 48 hours. Got it. So basically within the within this week, we'll have more details on what they need to do. Early this week, yes. Got it. Um, so something else is when it comes to the money that's provided to the unemployed through the CARES Act, um, we did see that checks were mailed out to roughly 23,000 you know, different people. Is that going to, sorry, I know it's loud. I'm going to wait a moment. There's a motorcycle somewhere. Okay. So um, is that going to be the process moving forward? Will everyone receive checks when it relates to those federal benefits? Or is that going to change in the future as well? So uh, when we have electronic banking information, our preference would be uh, to do electronic funds transfer. Mm -hmm. It's faster. It's quicker for the recipient. And quite frankly, we save the money on a stamp. So we would prefer to uh, collect the banking information from uh, the applicant when they make their application. And, and if, we, if they don't provide that to us, we're probably going to follow up and ask if it's available. If it's not available, we'll either mail them a debit card or we'll mail them a check. Okay. Um, also, those third-party companies that have been contracted by the DEO to help with the overflow of phone calls coming in, are yes. there any updated metrics that actually show uh exactly how much of a help that has been and how they've been able to help in this process yeah so a couple important things we have engaged a number of firms to help with our phone calls as of uh about 12 o'clock today we had 130,000 telephone calls mm -hmm. most of those calls are a lot of them are repeat calls so i would guess based upon our stats uh of the 130,000 probably 40,000 were unique callers they get in the queue they hang, they wait online and maybe they get uh, they get tired and they have to hang up. So, but all of those call center operators that we have, they're all Floridians, which is very important. Um, and yes, we're getting a lot of calls and we track all those metrics and we want to make sure that we're improving on those metrics every single day. 
Now, we've spoken with people who at this point, honestly, some of them have just given up. You know, it's been more than a month of them trying to apply, waiting to hear back, wanting to receive their benefits. And I, I was speaking with one person the other day and he said, you know, this whole thing will be over before I receive my benefits. And um, it's heartbreaking for some people because they're in this financial pinch. What do you have to say to those people who are still waiting for their money and they have bills to pay. Yeah, no, I, I, um, it, it, I don't really have anything to say other than we're very, very sorry. Uh, I'm very sympathetic. The, um, I've had friends and, and family members of those friends reach out to me because they're the same boat. They applied a couple weeks ago and they haven't heard. We are working to solve the problems as quickly as possible. We've got hundreds and, if, and, and quite frankly, thousands of state employees working to solve the problems. And I know it doesn't, it doesn't put money in their account, it doesn't put food on the table, but just rest assured, it's a mission that we're not gonna quit until it's finished. Thank you. Is there anything else that you think is important for us to talk about or any updates that you think need to get out there? I think you've asked all the right questions. Perfect. I wanna thank you so much again for giving us this time um, just to speak with you. Um, if there's any updates, I think you guys have been doing a pretty good job of sending out the email blast, so we do receive those. But if you have any time towards the end of the week to maybe do a follow-up interview, just please let someone reach out to us and we'll try to coordinate that. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Commun you know, as I said, the bucket number one is, is communicating uh, and being transparent. So we want, we want to communicate with you and let you know. So, and um, Tiffany's the right person to keep in contact with. Perfect. Well, thank you, Secretary. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Very nice to meet you. Thanks, Sasha.